darling. Trust me. God's sake. It's for the best. God, I love you. Hey guys, so today we're going to be starting a new segment, and I know before you say anything, I didn't even finish my last one. It is true, I did not finish American Horror Story Hotel. I finished watching it, I just didn't finish reviewing it, and now I feel like too much time has passed for me to even try, so if you want it, let me know, I can finish it up. But if you've been with me for a little while, you know I used to do Saw Sundays, Saturdays, whatever it was, and I want to start a new one of those segments because I did all the Saw movies and I thought it was really productive, like we got through a lot of films, you know? We all know how I am with schedules, so we will see that on that note I'm gonna try to post at least one other horror review a week besides just the Stephen King movies That way you're getting a little bit more content from me It is the summer, so I don't have to worry about school right now Which is the biggest factor to going into deciding to do a segment if I was in school There'd probably be no way. I feel like I'm not enunciating my words right now. Probably I'm gonna preface this segment with a little disclaimer kind of thing if you know me in real life you would know that Stephen King is my number one idol of all time. If anyone ever asked me if you could meet anyone in the world, who would it mean? It would be Stephen King. I grew up reading his books. He's been my idol for years, like literally more than 12, 13, 14, 15 years, I don't know. I used to want to be him. I would genuinely cry over his novels, just wanting to be him. In case you didn't know, I was a writer. Well, I mean, I'm still a writer. I consider myself a writer. I just haven't written in a really long time. But short horror fiction is what I write, and so he was my inspiration all the time for my writing. And so going into this segment is a little bit scary to me. Thank God it's movies and not books, because I feel like I can't criticize my true one idol that it makes sense. It's gonna be really hard for me to critique these films knowing that Stephen King is behind them. So I'm just gonna throw that out there. A lot of these are probably gonna be really positive videos. I have a few that I may not have been the biggest fan of and I'll do that, you know, I'll tell you, but I will tread lightly because again, he is my number one idol. That being said, I asked you guys on Twitter how you wanted me to even start this segment. Do we go chronologically, like from the first film ever to the most recent? Do we go based on fan favorites? Do we go based on my favorites? And on the poll, my favorites won. So we're starting off with Misery, which is my number one favorite Stephen King adaption movie. Now when we're reviewing these classic films, like The Shining, how do you review that? How do you criticize that? Genuinely, like how do you do that? But I thought it'd be cool to talk a little bit about behind the scenes a little bit and where he's coming from when he wrote the book and also when he helped with the movie or if he didn't help at all, if he was happy with it, things like that. Now Misery stars James Caan, Cam Caan, and Kathy Bates, which Kathy Bates, Kathy B, she, my queen. It's the first Stephen King movie that she was ever in and then after this movie Stephen King loved her so much and then cast her into Dolores Claiborne which is amazing. And so for me, Kathy B, Stephen King kind of go hand in hand. I think it's safe to say that she's one of my favorite actors of all time. She actually won an Oscar for this film as Annie Wilkes. Now Stephen King was addicted to drugs, specifically cocaine, and he wrote this book, although he didn't come out with this until 20 years later, he wrote this book as a metaphor basically for his addiction. Annie Wilkes, the super fan, was cocaine, and he said this in a Rolling Stones article, so I'm not just like speculating. And basically anytime he tried to escape he was hobbled from escaping and that he was just separated from everyone, confined, just trapped basically with his addiction. He says he waited so long to talk about this and to admit that that's what the story was about because he didn't want to take away from the story and also that he just wasn't ready. I think a lot of this movie and book for that matter ties into his real life because as we know in 1999 he was actually hit by a car and there was speculation that he died and that kind of plays on over to the book and the movie of the writer in the movie uh, being in a really bad car accident and just people basically assuming that he died because they found the car. Also a little cool fun fact, in the movie the author's typewriter's N key doesn't work and so he has to write the whole story without the letter N. And in real life Stephen King actually had his first typewriter had an issue with the N key also was defected so I thought that was cool that he tied that little tiny detail from his life into the book which was then translated into the movie. So about the actors in this film, uh, Jack Nicholson was actually offered the role of Paul Sheldon and he turned it down because of his work with Stanley Kubrick on The Shining, which wasn't the greatest if you didn't know. We'll get into that though when I do The Shining. And what's ironic to me is Jessica Lange was up for the role of Annie Wilkes, which is really cool because then Kathy B, I call her Kathy B, I should probably just refer to her as Kathy Bates, Kathy Bates and Jessica Lange later worked together on American Horror Story, so I thought that was really cool. Jessica Lange, also one of my favorite actors of all time. She probably would have done amazing, I just cannot 
see anyone else playing Annie other than Kathy Bates. I think she is the epitome of that character. One thing that they changed from the book to the movie is the hobbling scene, which is a spoiler if you haven't seen it, but I'm assuming since it's been out for a really long time, like 26 years. Oh, can we also just mention this movie came out the year I was born? Maybe that ties into why it's one of my favorites? I don't know. But the hobbling scene was changed because in the books, Annie originally saws off one of the legs of the writer in the book. They thought this would be too gory for the movie and they didn't want to disturb people that much and so they changed it to hobbling, which she put a piece of wood between his legs as we know and she hits a hammer on his legs, feet basically, and breaks his ankles, which to me, that's a little bit more disturbing. Less gore, sure, but oh my gosh. Actually, Kathy Bates cried before she did this scene, and she cried before the final fight scene in this movie because she was so, like, kind of terrified of the violence. Like, she didn't want to, like, be that violent, but oh my gosh, it was amazing. It's pretty clear how much I love this movie, just the simplicity of it. The acting was phenomenal. This movie is what really introduced me to Kathy Bates as an actress and just... And obviously the fact she's an American Horror Story makes me love that show even more. But this is absolutely my number one favorite Stephen King film. It's actually not the first one I've ever seen. The first Stephen King film I've seen was Pet Cemetery, which is also good, but I have some more critiques on that one, which we'll get into when I review that. So that's basically all I want to talk about this film. It's really not a review because I just physically cannot like wrap my brain around reviewing one of my favorite movies of all time by one of my favorite people of all time, including one of my favorite people of all time. If you want to critique it, by all means, in the comments you can just list some things that maybe you thought weren't the greatest about this film. I totally get it. So feel free to leave that in the comments. Make sure to leave what other Stephen King movies you want me to watch, which there's a million of them. So this segment's going to go on for quite some time. That's one of the reasons why I want to film another review every week, just so we can, you know, have a multitude of things happening this summer, not just Stephen King. But I hope you guys are just as excited for this segment as I am. It's probably my favorite that I'm gonna ever do on my channel because it's just by one of my favorite people. So with all that said, I hope you enjoy and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. But what can people do to hurt a mountain?